Hello and welcome to this first tutorial on animating cameras in After Effects. Now the aim of these tutorials is to show you why cameras can be very difficult to animate in After Effects, what they're doing that we perhaps don't understand, and then give you a couple of options for doing a one-dimensional animation, and then in part two we're going to look at building a, a simple camera rig that will enable us to do multi-dimensional animation, so sort of pan over the top to rotate around it and to tilt it one way and the other and to have a quick understanding of how important it is to get the order of our rig right so that it looks correct. And I'll explain that when we get to that tutorial. Okay, firstly, what do we have in our scene? It's nothing complicated. We've got a spotlight, which is casting shadows. We have got a point light, which isn't casting shadows, but is just bringing a bit more light to the scene. We've got text, which is allowing self to have shadows cast. And we've got a floor. And that's simply the scene. And now we're going to create a camera. Now the way to create a camera, as you know, is to go to Layer, New, Camera. And this is the shortcut. On PC it's Control, Alt, Shift, C. And in Mac it's Command, Option, Shift, C. And I've heard people describe this as Mash Your Fist, C, which is a great description. So when I say Mash Your Fist, C, I'm basically all of your modifier keys, whether it's Command, Option, Shift, or whether it's Control, Alt, Shift, and then C. So Mash Your Fist, C is the quick way of doing it. So let's create a camera. Now, we've got an option here of creating a one-node camera or a two-node camera. Up to CS4, all you could have was a two-node camera, but new to CS5, you have the option of creating a one-node camera. And I'll show you one of the advantages, perhaps, of creating a one-node camera in a moment or two. But let's start with a two-node camera and go with the standard 50mm preset and click OK. So we've created the camera. Now, I want to be able to see my camera at the same time as seeing my scene, so I'm going to create a new viewer. So where it says Composition here, drop down and it says New Comp Viewer. Get a new Comp Viewer and then click on this hash area here, just to the very left of this tab. Click it and drag it and drop it till you get this sidebar to the viewer that you already have. And when you get this sort of lavender sidebar, let go and you've reordered your scene. And I'm just going to move this around so that we can see. And what I've actually got here is I've got a top view of the camera. Move in one. And on this side, I've got my actual scene. So we can actually see what animations are taking place. And if I just click fit to 100% there. Right, so now that I've got a camera put onto the scene, I can select my unified camera tool or just hit the C key on my keyboard. And then with the right mouse button, I can orbit around the middle mouse button. I can move backwards and forwards and up and down. And with the left mouse button, I can dolly in and out. And then if you just open up your camera, you'll see that you have the reset button there, so you can reset it. Now let's say that I want to do a simple animation. So if I move my text over to the left, and I want to do a simple pan from left to right. When I open up my transforms to do the position, please notice that the point of interest and the position are sort of ganged together. Now there's a reason for this, and to demonstrate that I'm going to ungang them and just do position. Now I've clicked the stopwatch to do position, I'm going to move forward one second, and I'm going to pan my camera across to the other side of the screen. Okay. Now when I play back my animation, you'll see that it doesn't behave in the way that we wanted. And the reason is, if you can see, that this point of interest up here has actually not been animated and it just moved to the last position that we gave it. That's why these two are linked together. So if I undo this a few times to get back to how it was, and then I make sure that these both of these are selected, and then I hit my stopwatch to animate them, and now I move across one second and pan across screen, you'll see that I've actually got an animation curve also here for the point of interest as well as the camera, so that when I actually do it, you can see that the whole thing is moving. Now as you play with cameras, quite often these get undone and you can end up with all kinds of problems. The other alternative is to create a one node camera and then you don't need to worry about points of interest. So if I just shut this camera off, we'll go back to the default viewer and we'll create another camera. So as I say, mash your fist C to create the camera. And this time rather than being a two node camera, we'll create a one node camera. Click OK. We can see our camera, there is no point of interest. And again, we can hit C to get our unified camera tool. And let's pan it across the left again. Let's open up our camera. And let's open up transforms. You'll see there's no point of interest. So we can simply do position, 
go forward one second pan back to the other side and then you'll see that we have created a pan and that's perhaps where a one node camera can come into its own you don't have a point of interest you can just do a simple pan so that's one use of a one node camera it avoids having to animate the point of interest you don't need to worry about it however you do need to be careful that the camera is pointing in the right direction it's looking at what you want to look at but you don't have to worry about it being too complicated so that's a simple solution I'm actually going to get rid of my one node camera just hit delete and I'm going to review my two node camera because I want to show you something else if I select the camera I'm now going to put this back in the middle in fact I'll reset the camera and I'm going to orbit around my text so this is a simple orbit around the text and it all looks good that's what you expect but I want you to notice I'm going to zoom out a little bit on this one here I want you to notice what's happening both to the camera to its actual animation path if you like and also down here in the timeline because you'd have thought that it would be orientation or rotation that are changing but as you watch me rotate this I'd like you to notice that what actually changes is position so as I start to orbit around my scene notice what's happening position is changing all the time but nothing is happening with rotation and orientation so can you see here the actual path that I end up with is a straight path which means that if I were to animate this I wouldn't end up with what I thought I was going to end up with let's do it and see let's click back to here let's turn off our animation that we previously applied and let's click on position point of interest and let's try and do an orbit of the scene so go forward a couple of seconds and let's do a quick orbit of the scene around to the other side and let's go back and you'll see what's happened the actual angle that the camera is going through is straight through the middle of the scene it's not done anything that we expected it to do because no rotation has taken place all that's taken place is that the position has changed it's remembered the X Y and Z position of the camera and simply given us a point to start and a point to finish which isn't what we wanted how can I change that now there is a way that you could change it you could simply go to one second and then on this screen over here you can zoom in a bit so you can actually see because if you select the X Y and Z gizmo you will do something different so it's not quite as straightforward as you might think let's make sure we can see the camera there it is and let's take the pen tool and let's start to pull that camera out zoom out a bit more start to pull it out zoom out a bit more now I'm getting into a problem here because I want to be able to select the camera I don't want to be able to select no nope, control Z it's getting a little bit difficult to select my actual camera I've even created a shape layer let's see if I can get back to my camera so select the camera and I want to be able to pull out the camera but I'm pulling out handles it's beginning to get really complicated to actually get in there and change and animate the camera but when you do manage to grab hold of the camera and pull it right out you can see that you can create the right shape and then you can change these bezier handles to be able to create the right sort of curve and then when you play it back you'll see that you do have of sorts a kind of rotation but it's not what we're looking for it's not predictable it's not easy it's really difficult so how do I create a simple method of being able to orbit the camera let me just undo these for a moment well maybe we want to talk about rotation and orientation but the first thing to say is when you do rotation what actually happens is the camera itself rotates if you look over here you'll see that it's rotating around its center point which isn't going to achieve what we want it's a complete waste of time so rotation is not a solution or well, what about orientation orientation is going to do the same thing it's going to rotate around itself the difference incidentally between orientation and rotation is orientation will always try and get to the end result as quickly as possible and take the shortest route whereas rotation will respect an overall rotation that we do so for instance if I do an orientation animation and I go forward say one second and I want to we think rotate around 360 pretty much grab it and go to let's do 359 in fact let's do 350 just to demonstrate this now that I've got this animation so theoretically it should rotate around what actually happens 
all it does is move. It takes the shortest possible line between the starting point and the end point. So rotation will rotate, orientation will try and take the shortest route possible between the two. So orientation isn't what you're looking for if you're trying to do a rotation of sorts. And that's the same with any layer that you get to. So don't use orientation because it's not going to solve the problem. Whereas if I do a rotation on the y-axis, firstly notice I have zero times and then the degrees, whereas orientation simply has degrees. If you want to do multiple rotations, you do one, two, three, four, five times however much you want to rotate it by. So for instance, if I go forward a second or two seconds, and then I hit two in here, that's going to give me two complete revolutions of the camera. It's not going to look around the text, so watch over here and you'll see what happens to the camera. It's going to go around completely twice. So that's the quick difference between orientation and rotation. Anyway, how do we solve this problem? The problem is solved by using another layer which you parent the camera to so that the camera can inherit, if you like, or use the anchor point of that layer. And the layer that we would typically use would be a null layer. Now, there is a keyboard shortcut which is mash your fist Y, or alternatively you can go to layer, new, null object, and you'll see, as I say, mash your fist Y is the shortcut for that, and that creates a null object. Now, null objects don't render, they just appear as this square on the screen. However, they are scalable. You can do bits and pieces with them, and of course you can make them 3D, and in a 3D scene, the first thing we want to do is make them 3D. So it's now 3D. Now notice the gizmo, that's what this device with these three arrows is called, is located at the top left-hand corner. Whereas on most layers, your anchor point would be right in the middle. The anchor point is on the top left-hand corner. And the reason for this is, if you were to go 180 degrees in the opposite direction, because a null object is just this square, how would you know that you were looking at the back of it if the anchor point was in the middle? So if I was looking at this and this anchor point had shifted over here, I would know that I was looking at the back of the null object. And if it was at the bottom, I'd know that my scene was upside down, etc. So that's why the actual anchor point is put in the top left-hand corner. But it has an anchor point, and if we parent the camera to the null object, and then animate the null object, the camera is going to inherit and use this anchor point. So all we need to do, make sure that we've got parents up. If you haven't, you can click in any of these areas here, right-click, go to columns, and pull out parent from there. As you can see, my parents are already up. Alternatively, you can hit F4, which toggles switches. If you haven't got it, um, mine's actually up permanently. And we can take the pick whip from the camera and say, who's your daddy? Which is a simple way of thinking of parents. Who's gonna control you, camera? So camera, who's your daddy? The null object is my daddy. And we can actually rename that null object if we like. Select, hit return, and call it control. So the camera is now parented to the control if we animate the control, the camera is going to use the control's anchor point. So if we open up our control, our null layer, go up to our transforms, and we start to do a Y rotation with this null object, watch what happens. We're actually orbiting around our null object, which isn't quite in the center of our scene, as you can see, because the text is slightly further back but you can always move your null object if you want to achieve that. So we can do a simple animation. Let's reset this. Let's click the stopwatch at zero, go forward two seconds, put two whole rotations in, two, hit return, and then we can actually look at our animation, hit the space bar, and we have actually achieved what we wanted to achieve. We've actually got a rotation around our scene. It's done precisely what we want. Now. You might think that this is going to be the solution to all your problems, that you can do X, Y, and Z animations. So let's have a look and see what X and Z would do if we start to play with their properties. Here's X rotation. If we start to move X rotation, you'll see that we're kind of panning over the top of the scene. So that's what X will do. Let's reset that. And if we look at Z, you can see we kind of tilt the scene. Now you might think that's the solution. All you need to do is animate these three properties and everything will be fine. And actually it's not quite that simple. You can try animating these, but I guarantee that you're gonna get results that you don't expect. And what we want is predictability in our camera. We don't want unpredictability. So let me just quickly demonstrate. If I undo this Y rotation, what I want to do is I want to go once around the text and also pan over the top. 
Right, so once around the text, I hit Y rotation, go to the end of my animation and make sure this goes one, one complete revolution. And then we also want to animate X over the top, so hit the stopwatch for X, and then go to the end of our animation, and then let's just move this until we go right over the top so we can see the back, say. Let's say that's our animation, that's what we want to achieve. So theoretically, we should just have it rotating and looking at the text, but look what actually happens when we do the animation. The whole scene disappears for a period of time. It's not doing what we think it should do. As we move around, the camera's rotating and then the whole thing goes upside down and completely out of sight before it eventually comes back. And so we haven't achieved what we set out to achieve at all. And that's because we need to be able to separate out X, Y, and Z into a different way of operating. Now how to separate these out and make sure you get them in the right order and to understand why it doesn't work properly, I will explain in the next tutorial. My name's Andrew Davis. thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.